Hey folks, welcome back to The Broken Meeple. This is the 8th of March 2014 and I'm recording three of these unboxing videos today. This is the second of three. I've just done Nations, which will be uploaded at some point soon. And we've now got Empires of the Void. Empires of the Void is a space game that I got to play thanks to a friend of mine called Gareth Thomas. Um, I believe he does Board Gaming UK on Twitter, which is like an Instagram account. Um, he's a good bloke, and he's got a lot of games in his collection that I've enjoyed playing, and this is one of them. So much so that I went and bought it. It's a space 4X game, although you could probably call it 3X. It's, it's a lighter version of those 4X games, and probably isn't as... Well, probably it isn't as in-depth as things like Twilight Imperium 3, or uh, Exodus Proxima Centauri, or much too even overrated as the game is Eclipse. I've got to give a mention. Um, but, you know, this one I really enjoy because you can get into it reasonably quickly. It's good fun. There's a lot of combat involved and you've got choices of whether you want to be, like, conquering planets or uh, being diplomatic with them all. And with the expansion Key to the Universe, this just shines. Um, I, I admit the base game alone does have some issues, mainly from having too many tokens and also being a bit fiddly or maybe some balance issues. But I'll get it over. Hang on, bear with me one second. This. Key to the Universe. It is a print and play expansion. You can get it on Board Game Geek. There's the rule book, which explains the game more simply than the one in the box does. Uh, you get additional action sheets on the repair bay, which I'll go into maybe, well, some of it will be more familiar when I go through the game unboxing. But I've laminated these, you just print them out, laminate them, nice and easy. You get tech tree charts, so all the it's normally represented by a load of tokens in this game, which is a little bit annoying, but you, you get the expansion and it has a nice simple chart. You just put a token on when you bought it, so nice and easy, very organized. And of course, you get more alien races, which I will go into later. So I'm just saying that, if you get this game, get the Key to Universe expansion, you will not regret it. It really does do wonders. But that's enough about the expansion. How about I just get started with the base game, really? That's what you're here for, isn't it? So let's see what's it. Now you can't feel the weight of this box, but ugh, this is a heavy box. There's a lot that comes in this game for your uh, sort of 35 to 40 quid price tag. Certainly good for the bucks. Empires of the Void. Slightly generic rule book, but and a fair too much text. Um, I admit that there have been complaints that the rule book is not the easiest one to read, even though it does have a very nice sort of setup diagram. This is a very colourful game. But like I said, that expansion whoop, hit the camera there for a second. Um, that expansion, like I said, you get to print out a 20-page rule book which has more diagrams and is easier to use. So I say, like I said, it sounds like I'm belittling the game too much. And yes and no, the base game does have these issues, but the print and play expansion is free. It just requires a little bit of printing from the website, but it will improve this game so dramatically. And this was how I got introduced to the game with the expansion. You should always play with the expansion if you... Uh, play it with new players. I just think it's about as essential as you're going to get for an expansion. But let's go in. Right, so here we've got the, the different races. Now, each player has their own alien chart. This is just generic humans, but it has a list of all the ships that you can buy. So, Starfighter, Diplomat, Star Cruiser, f and various things like that. They're all the same across all the races, but some of these you can't even buy to begin with anyway, like the Firebug and the Sunhammer, for example. Shooting star. You need to have a. You need to be diplomatic with specific planets in order to build those ships, and that's one great thing about this game. But they each have a sort of pre-round and action turn chart, which is all the same. It's just there for your reference, and they usually have how much income they get at the start of the round, and and special abilities like you know they start with the diplomats. They can do terraforming. Uh, they get pluses on certain diplomacy rolls, that kind of thing. But you've got nomads of Earth for them. You've got the, uh, the Academy of Ig, <laughs> whatever that is. You've got the uh, Collective Five, which is certainly a Battlestar Galactica ripoff, I think. Uh, the Nakani Alliance. Ooh, that's oh, that's a that is a Council scoring chart. That's something else entirely. 
the Kingdom of Wrath, Mystics of Siri. These were who I played when I uh, first started, and they were good on certain diplomacy roles. Um, but they were very good at getting extra diplomacy cards, what they wanted, and the mind control ability of which you can send your opponent ships careening across the galaxy was hilarious fun. So I, I had a good time with Mystics of Siri. I might play the Oracles of Xenu next time, though, where you are cloaking on your star cruiser and you can conquer planets a bit easier and ignore mines, which is all quite nice. The parasites are sweet. <laughs> and no Mazarov. So you get a fair few alien races in the starting box, and that expansion I showed you, the uh, key to the universe, you got the crime lords of Gobnub, the sirens of Belshar, and the mining guild of Astra, and the travellers of Blazat. So you get quite a lot of alien races for choices, so you're not strapped for uh, variation in this game. Now we have the main reason this has got so much weight. There is a lot of these punch out boards, and I mean a lot. Gee, cool. Let me know. I didn't many. All of that is punch out boards. <laughs> there is a lot in this game. After that, you've just got the generic dice. Again, more bags. As I said on the Nations video, loads of people are doing this now. Fantastic. And you've got the scoring cards and event cards. Now, if I go quickly into the cards, generally the cards will look like two things. You've got these, which are event cards, which will have a title, a text effect, like this one, a particular planet gets space pirates, and you can get victory points if you go grab them. And But, you know, there's nothing major on those. And then you've got five different colours for these. Oh, is it four? I think it might be only be four, actually. Of which you've got capitalistic, you've got mysterious, you've got milit militaristic, you know, that kind of thing. And basically, you can trade these cards in to do a special action, which is like there, you know, use a trade good you don't own, get an extra move, that kind of thing. But you also trade in multiple copies of the same type of card to get you a bonus roll when you're trying to be diplomatic with a planet. And the way that happens, if I go back to the alien chart, you have this, oops, focusing on that, come on, sorry the camera's been a bit, there we go, where it says 17, 13, 8 and 4, basically for however many cards you trade in, you get, you have to roll that number on three dice, so obviously if you do it with only one card, unless you've got some serious pluses to your roll, you're going to struggle. Uh, two cards, you can just about do it with the 13, especially if you've got pluses. Three cards is a nice safety measure. Most people can get eight on three die, and if you want to pretty much make it certain that you're going to get the planet, and you need a lot of cards, but you can do it on a four. So that's essentially how those cards work. But let's get into the real bread and butter of this, which is these punch-out boards here. These are basically where this game shines. Because, I mean, i got to admit, this is done by a publisher and a designer that isn't exactly like well-known in the field. They haven't done many games, but... Look at that. I mean, that is what you want planet systems to look like. It just looks so colourful. So gorgeous. I mean, um, let's see if I can punch out one of these hexes. There we go. Basically, this is how the map is set up. You put a load of these hexes um, in on the map. Join them all up where those like you can see those like little lines represent routes. They connect up. And you've got asteroid fields, you've got monsters, you've got the different planets, and they give you certain income if you get them. They might give you a special ability like that one. Reroll the dice in combat if you are diplomatic with them. Uh, influence and victory points that they're worth, you know, and the resource, that red symbol there is a particular resource, that yellow one there is a resource. And if you're diplomatic with the planet, you get like the influence and the special ability, but it's harder to be diplomatic with them. Conquering the planet's relatively straightforward, but you just get the income and the victory points and that's it. And like this one here, Tanlock Black Hole, that was a ship that you could build on your original chart. So if I go back to this, where's the black hole? Black hole is, there we are, there's the, there's the black hole, focus in on it. There we go, it's a cloaking ship. So you have to have diplomatic relationships with that planet to build that ship. And that's one thing I really like about this game, the fact that the people not only differentiate by their alien race, but they also differentiate based on the 
planets that they are diplomatic friends with. I mean, I had different ships completely to my uh, Gareth when I played this game because I was diplomatic with different planets than what he was, and it just really differentiated our races out. It was really cool. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, but you'll notice that they're exactly the same on each side, so which is nice because I hate it when it's white on the other side. But they missed out a trick with this because you'll notice that that is identical to that in every way. So yes, okay, you've printed on both sides so it doesn't look cheap, but they could have changed the planets and had like different order of routes and stuff. I, I don't know why they didn't do that. But I hear though, off the grapevine, that they are reprinting this later in the year. I was tempted to wait and see what that would do before I bought this game, but I enjoyed the game so much I thought I would just buy it now. And if they do do some changes in the reprint, God knows when that reprint will come out. It might not be till later in the year, it might not be till next year even. So it could be well that, you know, it was worth buying this game now just to enjoy it. And if they do change anything pretty significantly, I could always just buy the game and just hijack all the parts, you know. I mean, you know, if they do like different type hexes, I'll buy it just for that. I'm sure it will be just as enjoyable. Anyway, on top of that, you've got these little tokens here. The purple represent victory points and the green represent credits. So it's lots of little triangles and squares and that kind of thing. And across these, I mean, they are pretty much the same. You get like little additional things like distress call and space fireworks, that kind of thing. But essentially, you're talking a different hex. So there's mines, uh, planet Weeble, <laughs> and planet Mrock. And you've got just more, oops, sorry, more victory points, different value credits. So those punch out boards are pretty much the same across the entire thing. I mean, they're just basically the different hexes. And you can make a pretty impressive planet system with this. You know, the, the game varies depending on how you do it. It's not like... They, they change all the time because the routes connect up in a really cool way. So, you know, no map is ever the same. But it would have been nice if they had printed a different layout on both sides. But you can see that that's a typical layout for the planet. So you've got... All the planets linked up, all those routes linked up. And those little corner bits are where your home planet is. So basically just however many players there are is what you end up there. Uh, another planet here. Right, here we go. We've got some different sheets here. So let's go into this one first. Depending what colour you are, you will have all these ships available. So you've got star fighters, uh, sorry, star cruisers, uh, little star fighters there. Uh, I believe those are centipedes, and I believe on another uh, chart there will be diplomats. I believe. Uh, oh, yep, yeah, here we go. There we go. You know, we got uh, the big sort of sun hammer ships, and then you got the diplomats and things like that. And you will notice on this one actually, if I go back to it, you've got those corner tiles that I mentioned. You've got some home planets, but you've also got the other ships. So you've got the firebug there, you've got the shooting star, I believe that is, you've got the, uh, that's the moth, what's that one? That one is, let me have a look at the alien sheet, that one was a tempest, the uh, orange, the yellowy orange one. So these are all the ships you can buy if you're diplom diplomatic with that planet. And yes, yeah, some people sort of niggle that these aren't miniatures, but I just think you would up the cost of the game, and I think these look pretty cool anyway. They look quite detailed, they're very colourful, they're very unique. So I don't see a problem using tiles. I just think people are sort of expecting too much, really, with small-time publishers. But going back to this board, now this is where it's a bit controversial with this game. The tech tree that I showed you before, that chart, in the original game it's represented by all of these tokens, all of these tiles. So every time you buy one, you've got to have another token. So there are tokens all over the place in terms of what you have because you've got all the ship tokens you've got all the uh, hexes you've got you know obviously everybody's got all their ships so there's different colors worth with different colors worth of tech tree and there's only so many techs i mean there's not that many there's only about 20 techs that you can do in the base game but if you get the expansion that tech tree chart adds a few extra on so you get much more variety and it's better laid out uh, but going into the other ones, you've just got again the corner tile, uh, some home planets, depending on which characters you're playing. Enemies, they're relevant for sort of in-game stuff. You've got a unique ship for particular players. 
different colors in player one, two, three, and four. So, and again, they print them on the reverse. So I do like the fact that they have done that. It shows that they're, they're not just trying to save money and give you like white backgrounds because it does make the game look cheap. But that's essentially what you get in the box. I mean, the insert's nothing major. It's, uh, it's also a bit sort of grubby and worn in places. But, you know, it's functional and it does the job. But I do stress that you should get this with Key to the Universe because, like I said, you're going to use these ships, so that's a given. And you're going to use a fair amount of those tokens. But you can get rid, well, you don't get rid, you can just store away those tech tree ones because with the Key to the Universe expansion, as I showed you before, you have this chart where most of those are already on and they added some on and you get victory points as well for those. So instead of having to take the token, you could just simply do what we did and place a credit token on the one that you've got. They link up so it shows a progression as opposed to just literally buying them for the sake of it. And you know, you just put a credit on the ones that you have bought. Easy, job done. And it's just there on a nice little sheet that you can track during the game rather than having all these tokens everywhere and you can just go Ugh, and they just litter all over the place. So that's essentially what's in Empires of the Void. I mean, it's a heavy box and there is a lot of good quality, uh, sturdy punch out boards in here, but it just looks so colorful. I mean, those ships look colorful, the races all look colorful and they're varied and all of these different hexes. I mean, this really does look gorgeous when you put it on the table, I tell you. It really does. Can't wait to get this back to the table again and show it off to some mates who are particular fans of spacey games. I reckon they'll like this. They might think that they want something a little bit more in-depth because this is not in-depth. There's Twilight Imperium 3, but then what is? You know, and Exodus is probably more in-depth as well. But this is a good light 3 slash 4X game. And I say light, you've still got a lot of decisions you can make and there's still a good amount of choices. you just got a little bit of dice rolling as well to mitigate which you can mitigate, so you don't have to get completely boned out on the dice rolls. But, and it's playable in two hours or less easily. So, you know, most spacey 4X games take so long to play. And this is only for two to four players, so you're not going to have too much downtime either in between turns. I mean, we certainly didn't. We only played a two player, but we still had plenty of combat, still plenty of interaction with two players. I reckon with four players, the whole place would just become a massive like, field of carnage. Can't wait to see how that goes. So, let me just retrieve the box. Didn't do this with Nations, but there you go. Empires of the Void. Thank you for listening to this unboxing review. And I can't wait to get this to the table again and review it at some point, including Key to the Universe as well. I think that deserves its own review, or maybe I'll just... Uh, in fact, actually, I think when I review Empires of the Void, I will just include key to the universe in the review because I think it's just a staple expansion that you need to get for this game. So thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Let's go on to unboxing video number three. Whew, it's going to be a long day. Take care. Bye bye.